Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Alan with the broadcast of the Morlog Morning Digest. And as always, I ask that you guys please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Most importantly, destroy the analytics and share the content. You'll find a few links in the description below. One of them is to a backup channel as well as a couple options for donations. No obligation, but it'll help me moving forward. Today I want to talk about the human attention span and how if you compare us to our ancestors of even a hundred years ago, we are far weaker mentally than they ever were. And in turn, this was done through engineering, both psychologically and socially. What do I mean by this? I want to point back to the Industrial Revolution because this is the first actual example that I can give you and it set in motion a series of events that ultimately was planned, in my opinion, and led us up to the events of 2020, which, let's face it, man, they've been coming at us through a fire hose, and we've all been drinking it down, but most of us don't really understand what's going on. Now, the reason we are inferior is because of instant gratification. All right, and I'm gonna point back to the development of the assembly line in the United States. What it did is it changed American society, economically I should say, right, from a demand economy to a surplus economy. In turn, for the first time ever, giving us the ability for instant gratification. For example, something that would have been painstaking to make and take a tradesman who spent his entire life, such as a gunsmith, learning a skill can now be accomplished by a hundred competent men, right, following very simple procedures that you could teach anybody. In turn, ultimately lowering the value of said good as well as destroying trades all across the country at the same time. In turn, the average citizen did not have to work as long, didn't work, have to work as tediously, or wait as long for the same product. In turn, setting in motion a series of events that I believe was planned, right, and executed to a T because what this did is it completely put in place a new set of morals as well as a new character for our entire country. All right, with that being said, I want everybody to think, and I'm sure most of you are old enough to have experienced an analog world. What do I mean by analog? I mean non-digital, non-smartphone, right? Pre-internet, VCR right? TVs that you had to get up and change the channel on. Okay, even though, right, we were a supply, we were a, not a supply, we were a demand economy then, right? There was still far less, far less instant gratification than we have today. Now, big steps were taken from the Industrial Revolution up to the 80s, right? But ultimately, the programming wasn't done yet. Now we have the introduction of the internet, and as soon as the internet was developed, right, we had psychologists and engineers working together in order to manipulate the actions and emotions of the human brain, right, via this network, via this internet, via this technology that they introduced. And it started very simply, okay? I want you to think back to the 90s when you went onto the internet and it was nothing but words, right? And you had to go into a freaking forum and you were just getting screen, text on your screen. There was no, there was no pictures, none of that. But the amount of information that you could obtain was more than ever before. You could literally access any information you wanted if you knew how to use that technology. And it felt like instant gratification then even though you were waiting for a modem for God knows how long, right? This was just the first step. And what that did is, slowly but surely, it took the time of delivery down. The delivery of information, the delivery of that dopamine hit, okay? Because even though you don't realize it, right? If you send out a request for information via the internet and it comes back, your body gives you a dopamine hit when you get that information because you accomplished your task. 
So, we're gonna move on from the internet of the 90s, right? Let's jump to the internet of the 2000s, right? Let's talk about instant gratification. We had DSL. DSL literally moved the bar a hundred times forward and you could literally instant gratification anytime you wanted. It, in, it, it introduced video gaming, MMORPGs where you could play with people all over the world. Constant dopamine releases. But there was a problem. You had to be at home sitting behind a desk. And that's not good enough because it doesn't reach everybody. All right? They had to find a way to get this technology into the hands of the masses. And that is in turn what happened with the development of the smartphone. All right? And the smartphone takes this entire scheme full circle. Because what it does is it puts that technology into the hands of even the poorest people. And it's not like the internet of the 90s, right, where you had to know coding, you had to know, you had to know all kinds of stuff in order to be operate, operate that internet. Now, we have a smartphone that you can put into the hands of the dumbest person in the world, right? And they're going to be able to access anything they want instantly. And because we've been programmed to want instant dopamine hits over and over and over and over and over again, what do we do? We willingly go onto these websites like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and we constantly seek the approval of the outside world for that dopamine hit, right? And this right here creates a vicious circle of needing the approval of the society. But not only that, they can manipulate how you think. Because you have to realize the internet, right? is controlled by the same mega corporations that control the media. The TV, right, doesn't give enough dopamine to you. You have to be at home sitting in front of it. So what did they do? They just moved their propaganda from one medium to another. Yes, the TV still exists because 80, 90-year-olds, 70-year-olds don't have smartphones in their hand, right? But they still want to be able to program those people. So you have CNN, you have Fox News, you have MSNBC being broadcast through the TV, but at the same time, right, you have them manipulating what we see on Twitter. Perfect example is what just happened with this protest the other day, right? I believe it was yesterday, you had the entire world posting black screens on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, ultimately giving you a dopamine hit, thinking that you're conforming with society, but ultimately, you didn't achieve a damn thing. They just made you think you did. You never got up off your ass to go out and do anything in the streets. You never voiced your opinion. You did what they told you to do and put up a black screen because you'll want that dopamine hit. That's exactly what society has become. It's become one giant game of who can get the biggest dopamine hit. And in turn, these six corporations that control all of media are constantly devising ways of getting you to do what they want via dopamine hits. Why do you think all of these people are out there looting right now? It has nothing to do with George Floyd and it has everything to do with that adrenaline rush and that dopamine hit, all right? I want people to understand that because we're going to talk about 2020, a year in review right now, because it's all been based on this line of thinking. Being able to manipulate the country culturally through mainstream media via the internet, right? Via these apps that we go on and in turn giving you a dopamine hit by making you think that you are part of something. Everything that's gone on since 2020 has not been about anything other than the coming up election, all right? And what you'll realize is these media moguls all have common interests, right? And they are all in the same bed. They're all lying together. So, of course, right, they are all going to move in the same direction. And that's why as much as most people don't think Trump is a trustworthy person, the fact that he is constantly getting attacked, right, by these mainstream media groups, and these mainstream media groups have managed to manipulate the entire country into constantly attacking him, makes me understand that there has to be something about him that is detrimental to everything that they've set up, all right? And I understand 
that this entire system was built on limiting our free thinking, on limiting our ability to have an attention span of more than 10 seconds. It's hard for a lot of people, right, to think long term, to think end game, when in fact everything that's been done in our society has been led up to the end game that we are watching right now. All right? Now the reason that things are so obvious right now and so easy for somebody like me to see is because we've literally put these people, this organization of powers that ought not be, right? We've backed them into a corner, all right? And they are a wounded animal. So there's no reason for them to hide behind this veil of secrecy that they've been using for years and years via all of these, you know, apps like Twitter and Facebook, right? If you notice, the stuff that's been happening behind the scenes there has come to light. When previously, you would have never seen corporations' dirty laundry aired out like this. Because all it does is create further division. Even bad news, right, delivers a dopamine hit if you're looking for it, right? And that's why you don't see good news, right, on the, on the news channels because it doesn't manipulate you emotionally. Now, I don't really want to get into specifics about the whole coronavirus or this George Floyd riot situation because it's not about the virus, all right? It's not about George Floyd. This isn't about race. This is about control and manipulation. When you guys see these policemen kneeling on the streets in Seattle, right, that has nothing to do with them coming hand in hand with the civilians around them. Even though the police officers might think they're doing a good thing, they're playing right into this programming. Because what that does is, it gives everybody that wants to see change in this country a dopamine hit, right? They're going to plaster it all over the news cycle to make you think real change has happened. And then all of a sudden, it's out of the news and nobody thinks about it anymore. So they get to look good, right? They get to look good, they get to look like they're bowing down to these protesters and giving them what they want, when at the end of the day, it's nothing to do with helping these protesters and everything to do with manipulating them emotionally into doing what the powers that ought not be want. That's why you see police stand down all over the country as well. It's all about showing weakness, right, in order to emotionally cripple people and give them that dopamine hit that they so badly seek because as I've said throughout this entire video, we've been programmed to want that dopamine release. That's all I have for you guys today. I appreciate all the support for my last video. It took a lot for me to put that out there, but at the end of the day, if I can't share it with you guys, then who the hell can I? I'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy your weekends. I'll enjoy mine. I'm gonna be golfing three times this weekend. You can't beat that. Have a good day. God bless you and your families. And at the end of the day, remember, they're all you have.